Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I hope you can hear me over the sound of the road. Um, I thought we'd take five minutes whilst everybody's out, just have a quick look around the greenhouse and have a look at some of the carnivorous plants today. Okay, so here we are inside the greenhouse. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick tour around. I'm going to move a few things first and we're going to have a look at some of the carnivorous plants and how they're doing. Uh, we're going to also go over some of the plants that I've, been, that I've uh, featured in some of my earlier videos uh, over the last couple of weeks. Um, we've got the there are streepia divisions I made. I gave one of these to Roger Frampton. Um, what else have we looked at? We've got the cephalotus leaf puddings there inside. We might go and have a look at those as well. We've got Mr. Neil Lucia who's down here in the basket. He hangs underneath the work, or underneath one of the, uh, the staging here, out of the direct sunlight. So you probably remember this guy. He's doing really, really well. Pseudobulbs have stayed nice and plump. Only three leaves though, so it's still Time's going to tell with this guy. Um, like I said, he hasn't really enjoyed uh, the move very much. It hasn't gone well for him. Um, so what I'll do is I'll pick the tripod up in a minute and we'll have a wander around and have a look at some of the carnivorous plants. Okay, so here's some of my Nepenthes. Got lots of new growth, or some of the new growth that we looked at in the, uh, in the first orchid tour. It's really starting to take off. Some good sized leaves. Uh, some new pictures uh, um, appearing or forming on the end. These are starting to look really good. Still only really baby pictures. They're certainly a lot bigger than what they were. This picture's popped since uh, since we've uh, since the plants have been inside the greenhouse. This is a Nepenthes fusca. You can see the uh, the little ladders for the insects to climb up to the peristome here. Um, before they drop down to be slowly digested like the plant equivalent of a charlac pit from Star Wars. There's an, another fusca over here. Uh, this is Tabica. Love your little pictures on this. Not really much colour at this stage. Uh, plenty of new growth coming out the top. Kind of didn't really like the uh, movement from. They were inside a little greenhouse inside the house underneath some lights for a while. Um, didn't really like the shop, but they're sort of adapting now, which is really good. Uh, Nepenthes raffaziana. Starting to get some of these the, the, these um, pictures with the, the, the wide bell-shaped bottoms, uh, little purple dots on the uh, on on the on the face of the picture. Pretty hard to see. I'll take some photos of these, put them at the end of the video. So that's this tray of Nepenthes. We'll pick you up and move you. Okay, so that's you moved. We've got another Nepenthes to biker over here. Uh, dead picture, dead picture. Need to get in here. Oh, is that one gone? Need to get in here and have a bit of a tidy up. But these this plant's much bigger than the other one. The little pictures are really sort of taking off. Some new growth here new growth emerging there so plenty of new pictures another dead picture Just whip him. I'll have to cut him off I think he's a bit stuck on there Nepenthes gracilis this thing's starting to sort itself out now we seem to be having a bit of success with this so we've got a new little picture there the little uh, the little shoot from the bottom is really taking off as well we've got some new growth on that it's coming up out of the compost and the, uh, the sphagnum moss and we've got a new leaf here, uh, which is going to picture as well. So that's really good news. He sits up there because he's a fussy fella, that one. Uh, Nepenthes aristolacoides. This guy's doing really, really well. Little tiny baby aristolacoides shaped pictures. We've even got one that's starting to look a little bit more mature down here. It's starting to take on a bit of coloration as well, rather than being just entirely green. Uh, lots of new growth emerging at the top, lots of new pictures. Very happy with them, I've wanted one of those for a long time. Nepenthes jacquelinii, lots of new leaves, lots of new growth, even a little tiny jacquelinii picture just there with that big f the flared peristome starting to shine through. Still only very young, a very young plant really, I'm expecting lots of, lots of big things from that later in life. Nepenthes lowei eye starting to get there. Got the deep red pictures down here. Lots of new growth. These were tiny, these things, when I bought them, like literally microscopic uh, from Dr. Westuber. They're starting to take off now, though. 
they really like being here in the greenhouse. My other lower eye starting to get these these decent sized little well, not decent sized little tiny perfectly formed pictures hasn't quite popped yet though. On a completely side note, over in the corner here we've got uh, my Dendrobium Spectabile Orchid, which is still in flower, still going really, really well. Smells amazing. I didn't think the smell could have possibly got any better up until recently. Smells incredible, I'm stopping from wobbling around. There we go. So yeah, the uh, unusual hinge lip still very pronounced, deep smell, the sepals have really curled back giving it that sort of um, characteristic spectabile look. Starting to lose a little bit of colour now on the lips of the flowers, uh, probably won't be long, it's probably been out for two to three weeks. Lots of new growth emerging, new canes coming down here and uh, some of the new buds as well are emerging from the adult canes. Popping back over there, and we'll move you again. Over on this side, we've got my Drosera Bamani eye seedlings, which are starting to take off in here. They look really, really good. Really happy with those. I've got to feed those. If you don't feed them, they just disappear. They just die. Um, so it's really important. I, I feed them with a uh, little bit of uh, freeze-dried um, bloodworm, and that soon gets them to grow a lot quicker. They don't sort of waste away uh, through lack of food. Here we can see my Pinguiclias, uh, Pinguiclia uh, Moctezuma cross gigantia. Still haven't got around to tidying these guys up. Really bad plant husbandry. Pinguiclia cross Tina is really taking off. We've got lots of new growths getting much bigger, like it should do. It's even caught a couple of fungus gnats. And the other one there as well in flower constantly. Pretty little purple flowers. Over the back there is where my Drosera regia lives. Looking really good at the moment. I'll move them up the front so we can have a closer look. Move you guys down for a bit of a zoom in. Joshua Regia, since the last video, he's coming along fine. Got a lot very dewy in here. The high humidity really makes them produce a huge amount of mucilage. Uh, that, that leaf that was maturing is now matured. Um, and there's new growth emerging from the crown of the plants. Um, I topped him up with a bit of water this morning, so he's been sitting here. It's hot again in the UK. I think it got up to about 25, 26 degrees outside. Um, but nice and cool here in the greenhouse. Maximum temperature of about 23 degrees centigrade. Another interesting plant, which you guys haven't seen yet, hangs up here from the roof. It's one of my large Nepenthes. Uh, this is Nepenthes cross ventrata pretty common plant, very vigorous, uh, grows like stink, produces huge amounts of pictures. The plant's absolutely covered. There we go. That's a bit of a better view that we can see that. I don't know why some of the pictures decide to present themselves sideways. This one that has. It's probably the biggest picture on there at the moment. Lots of new growth coming up. There's another little baby picture there starting to inflate. I'm waiting for the space between the um, leaves to uh, extend so it goes into a vining stage and hopefully it will grow up around the greenhouse and uh, we won't have to uh, put in quite so much supplementary shading. And he just sits up here on one of these hooks, suspended from the ceiling. I've rolled back the shade cloth along this portion here as well to allow a bit more lighting for the carnivorous plants. I'll move, move you over and have a look at some of my other Drosera. Okay, so this is my little tray of Drosera over here. Drosera multifeeder extrema. It's growing really, really well here. I must get a hanging basket. I know I've already said that before, but I really must get a hanging basket. My sons Alice and Cape Sundews are doing particularly well. Very dewy. These two grow naturally together. Anyway, there's a little maidenhair fern growing in there. So they, they accompany uh, each other beautifully. All the Alice sun juice are producing these long flower spikes now. So I'll take some seeds off of those. I might pop some on eBay or give some to some people at work to grow. Very dewy, great plants, bomb proof. What more do you want? 
Over here we've got um, Drosera dicosima um, giant, which is this one here, I think. Drosera banata var dichotoma. He's oh, he's been repotted recently. Lots of new growth coming out of him. I'm not sure whether he liked the light change, the light intensity change from the terrarium. It got suddenly very bright for this guy. So we've got a little bit of dye back on some of the tips. Some of this sort of red um, sort of um, uh, pigment has appeared on some of the stems. I'm not sure what that is. Can't see anything crawling around. Don't think it's spider mite. Can't see any bugs. So I can only assume or attribute it to uh, um, a, a higher light intensities. Very dewy. Some of these fronds are getting absolutely enormous. There's another big one growing at the back here. What else have we got? Here are some of my Drosera capensis alva. I grew from seeds. I must spit these guys up and repot them. Over the back we've got a little tiny Saracenia minor growing away. My Drosera adelaide divisions are here. Growing really well, very dewy. Doing absolutely fine, really taking off since repotting and separating from the mother plant. Popping back over there. The mother plant I've repotted recently. We've got a lot more green pigmentation to the leaves. What I'll do is I'll move you now and we'll zoom in and have a look at him. There we go. That's a much better view. We can see Drosera Adelaide here. Taking on much, remember how red this guy was? And really thin lanceate leaves. They're becoming wider and much greener with the lower light intensities. It seems to be a lot happier. Drosera prolifera as well is really starting to take off now. Um, it seems a lot happier with, with slightly lower light intensities. And I don't know if we can see it, we might have to zoom, tilt you guys down a little bit. This was my Drosera scorpioides. And I thought I'd lost all of these guys, um, and uh, so I'd sort of ignored it. I sowed some um, a Utricularia um, bismata Betty's Bay seeds in there which have taken off and there's a few of the old flower spikes I doubt you can see those from there the other day I was wandering past it and I've something I noticed something in one of the corners because when this plant came it came with a load of gamay which I took off and planted around the pot to produce more uh, more more little plantlets and I noticed there's actually a little tiny Drosera scorpioides left he's growing in this corner here and what I'll do is I'll pick you guys up and get the camera down there and see if you guys can see him if not, I'll take some photos and it'll go in the video at the end. Okay, it's so not sure whether you can see that. By my finger there is one singular Drosera scorpioides plantlet. So I'm very happy about that. I caught a fungus gnat the other day and fed it to it, so it should be getting a bit of a growth spurt on now. After this, we'll go outside and have a look at some of my other carnivorous plants. Okay, so we're going to have a look up here. I'll grow some carnivorous plants out here, some more temperate ones, ones that won't handle the heat inside the greenhouse. Joshua Bernata, this got very sad. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not entirely sure why. I think it was getting a bit too hot for the plant. Um, I've moved it outside. We've got lots of new growth emanating from the bottom of it. I think this might be to do with senescence. Um, it's because I think I brought the plant on very early in the year. And I think actually what it's trying to do is it's trying to go into dormancy. Anyway, it's doing okay at the moment. And that lives up there. I've got a little tray of water up here with approximately two inches of water in it. Uh, Drosera filiformis vartracii. This has really taken off since I've moved it outside. Um, it went a funny colour, looked really really ill. I sprayed it with some neem oil because I saw some critters climbing around on the soil surface. Anyway it seems to have perked up a lot. Um, so there's lots of new um, fronds coming up from the resting bud down there. Some of these old leaves have turned a horrible colour and I'm going to cut those off quite soon. The Saracenia Farnhamii, Farnhamii. This was for 25 pounds basically. This is one of the ones I rescued that was dying in my local garden centre. Um, I picked it up, bought it home, I got it for £5, so super cheap. Lots of new growth, lots of new trumpets coming up here. They're all starting to pop now. Some of these little tiny perfectly formed ones got this lovely purple sort of magenta-y sort of colour uh, to the top of the lip. 
really pretty so I'm really happy with that that guy's doing really well lots of new growth there's even a flower spike right the way down by my fingers so it's actually going to flower as well a bit out of season but then again it's had a rough year Saracenia purpurea, I guess subspecies purpurea, maroon this one is called. This was another plant that was £25. Uh, it was sick as a dog when I picked it up. Um, I took it home, lots of new growth coming out of it. Some of the older pictures that weren't too frazzled have rejuvenated um, and it's doing okay. So it was a win-win really for me. £5 each, £10 uh, for two plants that I managed to bring back. Thanks for tuning in once again. Um, I really hope you enjoyed these videos and enjoyed looking at my carnivorous plants. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe.